God fought. So when he hears Jesus, his soul leaps for joy. When he hears Abba Father, his soul is excited. When he hears anything about God, stares him. And so he cannot go a moment without prayer. Because when a man loves God, when a man is genuine, the Holy Ghost draws him. He cannot stay without communing with the Holy Spirit. So prayer for him is not what Christians do. Prayer for him is like breathing. Because every day, every hour, the Holy Ghost will keep drawing him. Because anything you love and anything your heart is connected to will draw you. And so when you find a Christian who is given to prayer, know that beyond what you are seeing, there is a force on his inside that keeps pulling him to the altar. The guy was talking in Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. And he said to kiss us. Go to verse 2. He said, let him kiss us or kiss me. This person, by the way, there's actually no us in this equation. It's a deep-seated reality of the soul. He said, kiss me with the kisses of, thy, of, his, of his mouth. He said, for thy love is better than wine. So what is projecting the guy to pray is a, a deep-seated intercourse and intimacy. It's the love that he has experienced from his king that draws him. He didn't say because you promised something. He didn't say because I want to make him pressure. He said, the reason I keep demanding, and the word kiss there is not a sensual expression. It's talking about passion. Inflame us with thy fires because your love is better than wine. And he went further in verse 3. See what the guy said. See, when you see people who have been baptized with prayer, they cannot but eulogize God because they are touching the fragrances of the Most High. He said, because of the savour of thy good ointment. He said, thy name is as ointment poured forth. He said, the name of God to him is like a man is standing and you open a drum of perfume and you are just pouring it. So is the way the fragrance oozes out of the perfume. He said, that's how when you say Jesus to him, Jesus is not a religious name. He remembers God. Something, the thing awakens him. It's like passion. Passion is deeper than the passion you have for a woman. When he hears about power, he hears about anointing, he hears about miracles, he hears about mercy, he hears about Jehovah. Something wakes up on his inside. So he doesn't remember that he's in the market. He doesn't remember that he's in the office. As far as he's concerned, anything about God is fragrance to him. And you must respond. If 10 people pass by you and they carry some strong colognes, you know that you must talk. The thing has a way of getting your attention. So the way the spiritual man, his attention is gotten, is by releasing prayer. So when God rises on his inside, and the tongue is a function of the dimension of intimacy that is felt. It's not something you repeat. Even if he's praying with his understanding, the thing is a fountain. Abba Father, the one who dwells in light, the one that creates the cosmos, the king over the heavens, the one that rides upon the cloud. Oh, thou majesty. Go and read the Psalms and see what prayer is. It's, it's a love story. It's, it's intercourse. It's intimacy that is beyond human comprehension. So a man stands up and he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. He, that, that is he's an intercourse. He's lost. Imagine how many those of
of you who understand English language, see figures of speech, see idiomatic expression, see the things the guy was pulling. He called him Lord, he called him Shepherd, he called him Soul Restorer, he called him his protector, he called him his anointer. Why well, how are you getting those inspiration? Because thy name is like the ointment poured forth. So you cannot but respond with you, Lord Jesus. You cannot but respond with a, 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 a response of prayer. 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 Oh my God. No wonder the apostle said in Acts chapter 6 verse 4. We cannot do any other thing. Prayer has damaged us. When we encounter this God, something came alive on our inside. So even when we are in the market, our thoughts are on him. When we are on the job, our thoughts are on him. So they said the only thing we can do is to give ourselves to prayer. To prayer and to the ministry of the world. We are drunk with this God. In fact, a point came. Paul said to the church in Thessalonica. In 1 Thessalonica chapter 5 verse 17, he said, pray without ceasing. This thing is not about prayer point. This thing is not about prayer time. It's a river that flows endlessly. Endlessly. Because sometimes you stop praying on your lips, your heart takes over. You thought you left the prayer altar. Mandaraka bakata. You have prayed for 10 hours. As you now close your mouth, your song, now, your heart now begins. Mandiaka, kekira. You are hearing it until it becomes too loud. You have to add your voice again. As you stop, your heart takes over. And then sometimes when you are done talking, then the heart begins to chant. the psalms they chant it because they know they are utterances of intimacy they don't read it a man wakes up in the morning and as he rises from his bed the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i fear the lord is the light of my life of whom shall i be afraid and he just keeps talking and he just keeps talking he wakes up another day he say him that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high abides under the shadow of the almighty and he shall see of his god is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom will i trust a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right hand he shall not come near me with my eyes i shall see and behold the recompense of the wicked what are you saying where are you talking from impression. Ask those who pray. They will tell you it's a life. It's a world. It's a realm. It's a river. As you are praying, a point will come. The prayer will overtake you. And you are praying, but you discover you are now writing on the prayer. Because when you pray for a while, the prayer will start praying you. Oh, I wish you know these things. You will enter different places. You will pray to a realm, you will laugh. You will pray to another realm, you will cry. You will pray to another realm, you are running. You will pray to another realm, you are fighting. When you finish, you know, you that started, you nail down. You will face the wall somewhere. Speed. 
I need to keep my soul in order so that we can go far. Time is a body. Every genuine Christian is a man of prayer. Go and write it down. And if you are not praying, your Christianity is still fake. Trust me. You have not just faced a circumstance that will reveal it. But the day the circumstance that will reveal how fake you are comes, you will fall. I'm telling you. These are insurance systems of a godly life. The way the life of God works in you is to ventilate through prayer. And you cannot but pray. Check the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Everybody that stood for God was a man of prayer. He said, from the days of Enosh, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Genesis 4, 26. And it continued like that. Noah found grace with God. And you thought he was lucky. And you now come to Genesis 8, 20 to 22. He said, Noah built an altar. Abraham, come out of that country. You think, ah, he was lucky. He was special. And then you go to Genesis 12, verse 6. Abraham entered Bethel. He raised an altar. Genesis 12, 7. He raised an altar. Genesis 13, 18. He came to Mamre. He raised an altar. You will now know that one constant that you will find in every genuine person across the generation was prayer. And when Jesus the Lord himself came, he prayed prayer, he lived prayer, and that was how he ended his work. Even on the cross, my Lord and my God, he was connected. My Lord and my God. At every face, prayer. The Holy Ghost came, announced him, this is my beloved son. You think he will go and sew a new suit? Did you not, were you not at the Jordan? I was the one they spoke about. No, he went to the wilderness. 40 days, prayer and fasting. He returned to the synagogue. You think, ah, he will come. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Every face of the way. He will leave a crusade. You will think he's going to sleep. Prayer. Jesus will withdraw from a crusade and go straight to the room and pray till the next morning. And then you are wondering, what is in this thing that you are doing? That's where the life of the believer is hid. It's on the altar. God will hide it there. Many talkers, but few people praying. That's why there's nothing to show. 